Hello, I'm JW. Today we're going to have a look at metal back boxes. Now these are the things which you would fit flat in the wall, as in you have to uh, make a recess in the wall to fit them in, and that's where the wiring would go, and then your socket or switch or whatever else would attach on the front. And although you can get surface mounting boxes, we're not going to look at those today, and in the reality most people want things flat in the wall because they don't want uh, loads of wiring and things on the show. So this is what you'd use if you're going to put the wiring recessed in the wall, and of course the socket and things recessed as well. Now I've got a selection of them over here, so uh, this is a fairly typical example. This is a double one, it's principally two sizes, it's the uh, double we've got here, and the uh, singles as well. And uh, they're generally made of steel, these are galvanised to uh, avoid corrosion, and uh, as I say, various depths things are available. So let's have a uh, closer look at these. Now in terms of size of these things, there's generally two mainly used sizes, this one being a single, and then this one being a double. These are normally used for single sockets, uh, things like light switches and whatever, and of course these for double sockets, and also some light switches where you have multiple switches on the same plate. And these can also be used for other things as well, such as those uh, ridiculously oversized uh, double pole switches for things like electric cookers and showers, some which have a socket incorporated in as well. But uh, in general case, it's uh, these are the only two uh, natural dimensions that are available. Now there are a couple of other weird types you can get, one important note here is that two of these are not the same as one of these. So if we get two of those there, for example, you'll see that two of these are actually quite a bit wider. So uh, that's for putting two singles in, but of course that's actually wider than a what's called a double one. And if you want to put two singles in, then you can get things like this one, which uh, is essentially two singles basically in the same outer container. And as with the two individual ones, you see it's quite a bit wider than the double version. This really brings us to another point in that uh, if you want to put say two singles or even two doubles next to each other, do not make the mistake of putting them in the wall like this, because uh, when you fit the socket on the front you won't be able to, because the actual sockets are larger than the boxes themselves, and the idea of that being is when you've plastered this into the wall, the edge of the socket will then cover the edge of the box, make a nice tidy finish. So that is for two singles. Now if you put two singles right next to each other, you'll see that they're actually quite a bit narrower. So if you're going to put two individual boxes in the wall, you do need to leave a reasonable space between them. That would be kind of the minimum space possible, and that means when you put the two faces on, they would actually meet in the middle with no gap. But in most cases you want to put them, say, a bit further apart, so you've also got a reasonable chance of getting the fronts on. And in terms of the uh, size here, we're here we're going to have a uh, double box, double socket, and if we place the one on the top, you can see that the actual socket is quite a bit bigger all the way around than the metal box itself. And that's how it's when if we've uh, plussed in, obviously you've got your edge there, it doesn't show. So it just gives that neat finish from the front. Now as well as the uh, actual dimensions, whether it's single or double, the other important consideration is the depth of the box. And we've got four different examples here. So put them on their side, you'll see that these are considerably different in the various depths that we have. Now this one is a 16mm depth, and these are really only good for light switches, and even there I wouldn't recommend actually using these. You can put a normal light switch on the front of these, but the problem with putting these in the wall is because of their ridiculously short or shallow depth here. If you want to put one of those sort of flat plate things, which are all the fashion now, you may have difficulty fitting it. And if someone wants to put a dimmer switch or something similar in, pretty much game over because there's not enough depth here to actually fit them in. So although you can buy these, I would not recommend using these unless it's absolutely necessary and it really is the only choice. And you know full well that the only thing that's ever going to be put here is just a standard light switch, and nobody in the whole history of civilization is ever going to want to change it to a dimmer, some flat plate thing, or anything else. So a bit of a fail, really. They were fairly common at one time because people didn't really have dimmers and things, but uh, these days you can get them, but uh, a bit of a disaster in terms of the depth. Now this one is a 25mm depth. This is normally what you put on the wall for things like light switches or whatever, because they do have that extra depth for dimmers and things as well, so that's really the minimum size. If you need a larger depth then you can get these, which are 35mm depth, so it's basically about 10mm more than the other version. And uh, certainly on new installs it might be worth just fitting these anyhow, because of course people like to put these uh, remote control switches and all kinds of other stuff in the wall there, and of course it gives you that extra space. The only disadvantage to these is when you're making a hole in the wall, you've got to make the hole just that bit deeper, but uh, in reality that's only a minor item, so uh, probably well worth considering those for 
fairly general use. And then the largest one, which is this one, this is a 47 millimeter depth. So again, it gives you that extra depth you've got there. Normally these are only used for things like sort of cooker switches where you've got big uh, fat conductors in the back there. But uh, again, they are an option if they are required. So those are the single ones there. So the four sort of main sizes, 16 of course being next to useless. Now when it comes to the uh, double ones, the sockets and the things, there are no 16s because a 16 depth of this would be useless because even a standard socket like this one would not actually fit. So they don't actually exist. The smallest size is 25. And although 25 is theoretically suitable for things like this standard socket, which has quite a wide depth uh, coming out on the front here, again if you want to have people fit those sort of flat extra flush type things, extremely difficult to fit them into these ones. And then of course people want those USB outlets and all kinds of other fancy stuff, which again in many cases simply will not fit in these. So although these were the sort of standard for many years, these days it's probably a good idea to use the next size up, which is again the 35, because again it gives you that extra depth there for wiring and flat sockets and various other things people may want to fit there. So uh, 35 again is pretty much the standard dimension for those. And again you can get the 47s here, this is uh, an example of the double version of that. And again if you've got say large size conductor 6 or 10 millimeters squared, you've probably got a idea to fit one of these, it gives you that extra room in the back to get the cabling in there. Now as well as this uh, dual box as it's called, so you've got two singles on a uh, standard box there, you can also get various other fairly unusual types. So for example MK make a three gang socket which is sort of that long and of course they also make the corresponding box to go behind that. But again that's only a very one item thing there so unless you're going to specifically fit those then uh, it's not really necessary. And of course being fairly unusual and uh, unlikely they also cost considerably more as well. These are uh, useful in a few circumstances. And you can also get uh, ones which I don't have here. So you've got these uh, sort of like six or eight in a big block so you can supposedly put it behind your television and have all your leads and wires coming out in this huge plethora of mess coming out of the wall. But uh, again those are only designed for use with basically one manufacturer's particular item. And uh, final size is there is this thing. This is an architrave box. And it's designed for architrave switches, which is basically a light switch, which is just the same similar dimensions of that. Generally a single switch on there. And the only purpose of these is you can have a very thin and slim line light switch. And of course this is the box that goes behind those. And in terms of the height there, it's basically the same height as the normal ones, but of course it's very much reduced in the width. And the other thing these can be used for, if you're going to fit wall lights, then you can actually put these in the wall behind where the light is going to be fitted. And these are small enough so that most wall lights will actually cover over this completely. And if it's one of those with the stupid bar that goes across the middle and the two screws, this can go in the wall with the cable coming in from the top or the bottom. And then you've still got room on the side to put the fixing screws in for the light. In theory you could put these in the wall horizontally and then attach a wall light to it. Some manufacturers do have this spacing on the actual fixing brackets for them, but sadly the vast majority don't seem to bother. So although that's a good idea in practice, it doesn't work very well in reality. But say so you can put these in the wall just for flex coming out of there into a light or whatever, and it's a bit neater than just having a hole gashed in the plaster or whatever and the wire coming out. Now in terms of installing these in the wall, if it's a brick or concrete block or whatever other wall, then it's just a question of marking around this on the wall with a pencil. And then you can either drill holes around the whole area of it and chisel in the middle. You can also get various uh, cutters which are basically this shape fit on a uh, powered drill and then they just uh, sink into the wall as well. But uh, if I say it's uh, a certain amount of effort and bother to cut a hole in the wall there. And you want to install them so that this front edge is flush with the actual face of the wall. You don't want it to be sticking out because if it sticks out then when you put the socket on the socket won't be flat with the wall. And you don't really want to put it too far in either because if you do it's going to leave a very raggedy edge around here where the plaster is going to break and crumble away. And in terms of hollow walls you can put those in there as well, sort of a stud wall with plasterboard or whatever, but you will need to put something in the wall to actually fix this too. That can either be a piece of timber across the back or you can also get metal uh, straps and uh, attachment things made for these which again just go between the say two uprights and then there's a uh, bar comes across and this attaches to that. Now in terms of putting the cables into these you've got various uh, holes here which can be uh, busted out, plenty on all sides and also the back as well. And uh, it doesn't particularly matter which one you're going to use, just depends where the cables are coming from. 
The only thing I would suggest to watch out for is this one, right next to where the Earth terminal is. Best to not use that, because if you do and you have cables coming in, then they're going to be right in the way of the actual terminal here, and you'll find it rather difficult to attach the Earth wires to that. So if you've put one in the wall and you want to use the corner one and the Earth is there, then very simple answer, just turn it around this way and use that one instead, then your uh, Earth terminal ends up at the top. Now in terms of removing these, they are designed to bust out. So what you need to do is take some large and heavy item, this screwdriver will do, and then just bust them out. And you see there's a tab here where it's actually welded, and the rest is mostly cut through. So you want to sort of hit it over this side rather than where the weld is, and it should just pop through. So let's just go for it uh, on this one. And you want to sort of give it a fairly hard whack. You don't want to press because it will obviously bend the metal. So let's have a go with that one. So a couple of attempts there, you see it just bends through, and then you can just bend this to fatigue that uh, well there, and then the little piece of metal comes away. Now once you've busted out the hole or holes, because you can of course use uh, multiple of them if there's a lot of wires coming in, then uh, it's not appropriate just to shove the cable through here because this has a fairly sharp edge. So if there's going to be cables coming in, then you need one of these, which is a grommet. Traditionally these are made of rubber, but they're made of plastic these days, so just uh, get these, they come in uh, usually boxes of 100 or something for a couple of pounds. And uh, these holes generally on these are 20 millimetres in diameter, so of course you want 20 millimetre grommets to go in, and they just uh, simply press into the box like that. And then when your cable goes through, of course it doesn't damage on the sharp metal edge of the box. And so you can put those in obviously as many as you want, and obviously if you're using the back ones and things, then exactly the same process. Now uh, there are of course other choices from these, but these are the most common because you're going to have the usually a twin and earth type of cabling coming uh, straight in there, and then uh, obviously that just protects it from damage. And it's mainly to do it when you're actually installing the cables, as in uh, pulling them through, because bearing in mind that once it's in the wall and it's all plastered in, the cables aren't going to move. So if you find an existing installation that doesn't have these and it's all plastered in and not moving, though in theory they should be there, it's not actually a huge problem because of course the cables aren't going to be moving, provided they haven't actually been damaged, so it's really there just to protect it when you're dragging the cables through the hole. Now of course you don't have to use uh, cables directly in, you can use other wiring systems, and if it was a plastic conduit for example, then you'll need one of these, which is a two-part adapter here, and these come in two styles, this is the female version, which is generally one that's recommended, you can also get a male version, which uh, is similar but not quite the same. And in the case of this one, the threaded piece here just goes in the hole like that. And again, it gives you a nice smooth edge so the cables are not damaged. And then this part just threads on to the outside. That's secured in position. And then in the case of plastic conduit, we've got a piece here that will actually be glued in to that fixture there. And then again, all this would be in the wall. This is also another reason why it's a good idea to use the 35 boxes, because on the actual holes are set towards the back, which means we're going to have sort of plasterboard or plaster or whatever on the front, you've got a decent depth for that to go on there. Whereas if you use one of those and you had conduit, the conduit is going to be literally about one millimetre below the surface of the plaster and it's going to lead to cracking and damage. So generally a good idea to use the 35s for that as well. And so this is a female adapter, and again these are only a few uh, pennies each generally. The uh, the difference with the male one is that the thread is on this piece and then you put it through the hole and you actually get thread inside with a locking ring on there. Generally they're not recommended because there's a lot more stuff sticking out in the box here because you generally get essentially the thread coming through and then there's a lock ring there so it tends to take up more space in the box. So though you can get the male version of these, the female ones, which is this one, are generally recommended. Now of course for steel conduit, which is another possible choice of installation on certainly better quality ones, then you'll need to attach this to the box, and the most usual way is to use a bush like this one, this is brass, and a coupler, this is just a threaded through all the way, and very similar to the plastic one we saw there, so it's basically the brass piece goes through the hole, and gives you that smooth edge on the inside to avoid damage, and then the actual coupler itself will just screw onto the outside of that, and again, you would need to tighten that up with the appropriate tool to make sure it's uh, securely on there. And then the conduit itself, again, is threaded, and that would thread into the coupler. And again, it gives you that space in the front there for the plaster or whatever, if you're using these 35mm uh, boxes. And then that is installed, obviously, in the wall, and then you would draw the cabling in afterwards. 
Now on virtually all of these the holes are 20 millimeters so if you have other items you might want to fit in there then anything that fits in a 20 millimeter hole of course can be used so things like armored cable glands are certainly a possibility though it's not a particularly likely conclusion as you wouldn't normally be burying those in the wall but again they will fit through there and even those sort of round things for flex and the like again will fit through here but again it's not uh, over likely to be using flex for this type of socket. Now the only time that the holes are not 25 is occasionally on these ones which are the 47 depth and um, we can see on this one that we've got some holes on the top these are the 20 but it's actually got some larger ones as well those are 25 millimeters and that happens to match up with the next size up in this conduit and the plastic as well which is 25 so some of these have uh, large ones but generally only on the much deeper boxes that's got some say 20 on the end and 25s over there but pretty much everything else is going to be the 20 millimeter architrave boxes generally have smaller holes simply with the fact that they are smaller items they're generally 16 millimeter so if you are going to use those you'll need to get a smaller grommet or being cheap you could just cut a piece out of this and then fit it in but uh, that's a bit of a kakaroo method of doing it now in the case of the 16 millimeters they have oval holes it's got a couple in the back there and there's two in the bottom here and it's also got this one on the top now the one on the top is different to the others because it actually has a roll edge as supplied from the manufacturer so you can actually put cables directly through there because it's been uh, say rolled over to avoid damage if you want to use one of these then the same method apply to bust it out of there. It comes out like that. And again, just bend the metal to fatigue that way. And although it's oval, a 20 millimeter round grommet will actually fit in there. Just needs a bit of uh, squeezing and maneuvering. Just get it in there. So it's actually the same size. It's just an oval shape rather than round. So 20 millimeters do fit. But so that top one is intended for use anyway without it as it's got the uh, sort of rolled over edge on that. So uh, yeah, they do fit there, but again, these are fairly unlikely items, so probably not going to be using those for much, if anything. Now when it comes to using these, they will have an earth terminal in the corner of the box, which is where the uh, CPC or the circuit protector conductors will connect to. These are the better ones with the actual brass terminal there. So it's just a post there with a screw on the top wires go in the side. There is another style of these which is a bit rubbish which is basically just a folded tab in the corner made of the box itself with a screw that sort of shoves through. They can work but they're quite difficult to get the wires into grip them particularly if you've only got one and they're fairly thin as it's quite easy to miss the screw or whatever but nevertheless uh, those do exist but these are certainly a lot better. Now in terms of the socket fitting on the front all of these will have two holes one at each side and they will just correspond with these two mounting points here. And if you're going to buy sockets, they only come with screws in the box, in some which came with this one. But of course you can buy them as a separate item, and you can also buy them in different depths, which is useful where morons have fitted these in the wall far too deeply. Or say, for example, someone has fitted this on the wall and not realising that the walls are going to be sort of lined out with plasterboard or something. So you can get longer examples if that's necessary, and in some cases it's very long. But uh, if your socket is in the wall this far, then uh, clearly something's gone horribly wrong. And these will just thread through into the fixing lugs there and will secure the socket in position. This one is movable, so it has a bit of adjustment to get the socket nice and level. This one over here is, of course, fixed, so it doesn't move there. So put them in the wall, it is necessary to get them level, but there is that small amount of adjustment just to make it uh, absolutely perfect. Now if you get one of these and find that the screw doesn't go in easily, it should just thread in with finger pressure only, then you can uh, recut the thread with one of these. And uh, it's just basically just putting in there and uh, just re-thread the uh, actual lug for you. And the final thing about actual uh, threads here is that on some older boxes, mainly those from the 1960s and earlier, then uh, you'll find that the threads are not actually metric, as in 3.5mm, they're actually the older kind which were 4BA and unfortunately 4BA is roughly equivalent to about 3.6 millimeters so the screws themselves look very similar but if you try to use a metric screw in a 4BA hole it will actually be very loose and won't tighten up properly and if you get screws from a 4BA socket and try and use them in a new box they'll be far too tight and will basically strip out the thread here and in some cases even break the lug off completely so just be aware of that with older ones and if you're replacing sockets onto very old boxes probably a good idea to reuse the screws that are already there rather than using the new ones that uh, come with them. 
Now here's another situation may uh, come across. You want to put two of these uh, next to each other with a reasonable space between, so it might be, say, for a double socket, and then a television area outlet or something like that. And you want to get these lined up properly because you don't want them sort of like that in the wall because uh, once the sockets are on that will look terrible and it'll be there to view for probably decades in the future. So uh, an easy way to get these lined up is to use some of these conduit components, so the uh, brass bushes we saw earlier, and also a coupler. And the deal is then you put the hole in there, put the brass bush in like that, thread on the coupler to this one, and then do the same with the other box. So again, this goes through there, and again that can just thread into this one. And then what you end up with is that, so you've got them uh, properly spaced there. They obviously guarantee to be level, and you've also got a nice way to put the wires from one to the other if that's necessary. And again, it doesn't damage there because it's got the smooth edges on that. And you could put another one there if you wanted to, if it needs to be sort of extra rigid or whatever. And you can actually make these up in the various combinations, so if you want to sit one above the other, put your other socket below and then just have a coupler coming down to that, and make it whatever shape you wanted. And it's just a way of making sure that you'll stay square relative to each other because of course say you put them in the wall and they're wonky, they're going to be wonky forever and the socket's going to be wonky and the people that live there are going to see those wonky sockets every single day. And finally there are some really unusual items which you can get, although they're not really going to be used that often, but uh, just to be aware that they do exist. If you've got a uh, box in the wall and some moron has put it in the wall far too deeply and you're ending up using screws which are sort of three inches long or something, then just be aware that you can get extender frames which are essentially the same as a box, except it doesn't have a back in it, so it's just the outer edge with the screw holes in it. And you can actually screw those over the front of a box that's already in the wall, and it just brings it forward with another set of screws to go near the surface. So fairly uncommon items, but they do exist. So an example here from a supplier, which I've found. So those things are available. And the other thing that's available, if you've got screws which are too short, and it's also one of these things where the screws that are supplied with it are a particular colour, sort of black or something like that, then rather than using longer screws which will always be silver on the head, you can actually buy extending studs, which basically screw into the back box, and then on the top of them they've got an extra threaded hole, so you can uh, put those in the box, and then still use the dexterous screws that came with the accessory, and that's generally if they say black nickel or some weird colour like that. Again, they're fairly expensive items, but uh, nevertheless they do exist and uh, do have uses in some situations. And you may see, certainly in very old properties, sockets which, rather than having a screw at either side, actually have four, and there's two at the top and two at the bottom. Now, uh, those are not made anymore and haven't been made for decades, so if you've actually got boxes with those, then you can't actually use those on the top and the bottom. However, most of them did actually have the screws on the left and right as well. So they've actually got six points, so you can still fit uh, modern sockets onto those. But of course if you have really old sockets which have the two holes at the top and the two at the bottom, then you're kind of stuffed because nobody makes those boxes anymore, and of course uh, you can't therefore use them. But bearing in mind that sockets like that would have to be probably 40 or 50 years old anyway, so the chances of wanting to use such things are slim to none, but nevertheless they do exist. And at one time single sockets actually had a screw at the top and the bottom as well, and bizarrely the uh, single boxes like this one usually still come with the four fixing points. So if you've got a socket with a fixing at the top and bottom you can still use it, but of course most now have them on the left and the right. And if you get one of these, certainly things like dimmers, it's a good idea to actually break off or bend away these tabs at the top and the bottom, because on some dimmers they will actually get in the way of the dimmer module on the back. So you can just bend those out of the uh, way there, or in some cases just break them off. So we've looked there at metal back boxes, certainly the most common type because most people want the wires in the wall out of sight, and of course the uh, sockets things to be flush and uh, as unobtrusive as possible. But uh, nevertheless you can get uh, plastic ones of these for service mounting, but to say they're certainly not as popular. So that's pretty much it for this time, and until next time, thanks for watching.